الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters what is very important for us to know is when we develop a relationship with Allah, when we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant us the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. Through that ability, we will achieve contentment. Imagine if you are able to know what's good for you and what's bad for you. Imagine if you are able to know what's right and what's wrong. Imagine if you are able to distinguish between that which is profitable and that which is not profitable. Imagine how happy you will be. Well, if you'd like that, Allah says to you and to everyone else, if you develop your relationship with Allah, you're conscious of Allah, you, you fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will definitely achieve something known as Al-Furqan, the criterion, the ability to distinguish and differentiate. So here goes. These are verses of Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 29. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم فرقانا ويكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويغفر لكم Amazing verse of the Quran, O oh, you who believe if you are to be conscious of Allah, I've said if you develop your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that's a holistic meaning of the term taqwa, he will give you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. And on top of that, he will forgive your sins. He will forgive your sins, subhanAllah. Uh, he will expiate, compensate them with something good because you've changed your life. You've developed your relationship with Allah. Brothers and sisters, in a month of fasting, the month of Ramadan, we are asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fast in order to develop that relationship with Allah. Fasting brings about compassion brings about a closeness to Allah, a softness. It, it disciplines us. Strive to develop your relationship with Allah. Strive when it comes to your prayer, when it comes to your charity, the giving, when it comes to your character and conduct. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely open your doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that beautiful relationship with Him. Then Allah tells us, you know, the importance of seeking forgiveness of Allah is such that even if the punishment were to be coming in your direction, it will be diverted because of you seeking the forgiveness of Allah. This is why it's very important to keep seeking the forgiveness of Allah on a daily basis. People wonder, I'm going through problems. Is it a punishment or is it actually a test from Allah? Well, if you are seeking the forgiveness of Allah at all times every day, it can never be the punishment of Allah. Do you know why? Because Allah says in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 33, A promise of Allah, He will not be punishing those who are seeking forgiveness from Him. While seeking forgiveness, it's impossible that what's come to you in terms of negativity is a punishment from Allah. It is only a test. You must relax, you must be satisfied and content, keep on building your relationship with Allah and understand whatever you're going through is in order to elevate your status. In this, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been through the most. He actually went through so much of what we would term negativity. He was never upset, he was never hurt, he was never ever saddened by the decree of Allah for him. He used to say, Oh Allah, for as long as you're happy with me, I'm okay. This is all fine. This is the messenger, peace be upon him. So remember, if you're seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be let down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to seek forgiveness up to 100 times a day. Imagine he didn't even need that. We need it. How many times do we seek forgiveness and then we're complaining that we, we lack contentment? You want the contentment? Quite simple. Seek the forgiveness of Allah, develop your relationship with Allah, and you will definitely achieve that contentment. In Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also makes mention of the gifts that He bestows upon man and the fact that He doesn't take them away until man deserves that they be taken away. 
What this means is if Allah has given you something good, He will not take it away unless and until you've changed your ways and habits and you've become a bad person. When you become a bad person, Allah says you deserve that this be taken away from you. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes gifts away from people. If you haven't been, become a bad person and still you lose something good you might have had, that would not be a punishment of Allah. That would actually be a bigger gift in the long term from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 53 of Surah Al-Anfal, ذَٰلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُ مُغَيِّرًا نِعْمَةً أَنْعَمَهَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُوا مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is explaining that this is that Allah does not remove or change the good condition or the gifts that He has bestowed upon a people unless and until they have changed themselves in a way that they deserve for that gift to be snatched away from them. For indeed, He is all hearing, all knowledgeable. That's Allah. So my brothers and sisters, just like when we're in a bad situation, Allah won't improve it until we improve ourselves. When we're, when we're in a good condition, Allah will not take it away until we deteriorate. So this is why we say when Allah has blessed you, become closer to Allah. How many of us lose contentment because we're wealthy? Do you know what that means? We became wealthy, temporary contentment, we forgot Allah, so Allah snatches the contentment away. How many of us don't pray because we're healthy? When your health goes away, you begin to pray. Wasn't that a gift of Allah? meaning the taking away of your health. How many of us, when we were wealthy, we forgot Allah. When Allah took the wealth away, we came back to Allah. Wasn't that a gift of Allah, the taking away of your wealth? How many of us, everything was flowing smooth, and suddenly when things began to go rough, we turned to Allah. Wasn't that a gift of Allah? Look at how Allah is telling you, O oh my worshippers, when I have blessed you, get close to me, you will be content. تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَائِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Get acquainted with Allah during your days of ease and Allah will get acquainted with you during your days of hardship. May Allah make us content. May Allah grant us happiness. So my brothers and sisters, do not take it for granted. When Allah has given you things, take it seriously. Get closer to Allah. So many people forget Allah on their wedding days. So many people forget Allah on the day of Eid. So many people turn away from Allah on days when they're enjoying the parties and whatever else they have, celebrating the birth of a child or whatever it may be. Those are the, the means of destruction of our contentment. We destroy the contentment that we've had. Why? Because we forget Allah during our happy days. The next Eid that we have, Remember to worship Allah, thank Him, dress appropriately, you'll be content. The next time you cut a pair of clothing or you buy a pair of clothing, make sure it is something that is modest and that would please Allah. If the Prophet, peace be upon him, had to see you, he would be proud of the way you dressed. Think about it. We always say, the day that covering yourself makes you very happy, the day that covering yourself makes you very happy, and the day that exposing yourself makes you sad is the day that you have actually developed a better relationship with Allah. Some of the scholars have actually said, when exposing yourself makes you sad and covering yourself makes you happy, then you have developed a relationship with Allah. May Allah grant us that beautiful relationship. So I'm just giving you a word of encouragement, not just for Eid, not just for a happy day or your wedding days, but for all days, try to please Allah. Try to please Allah and do things in the right way. It costs you nothing. People will learn from you. You set a good example. When you have set a good example and people follow it, you get the automatic blessings and full reward of all those who have learned from your example. And therefore, you will definitely be able to achieve the greater goodness and contentment from that. Imagine people look at your dress code on the day of your wedding and they say, wow, I'd like to cover like how Fatima covered, for example. And when they do that, you get a reward while you're lying down at home without even knowing. You're achieving blessings. The contentment that's coming in your direction is superb. You wonder why your children are so obedient. Mashallah, that's a good thing. You wonder how come everything is going so smooth? Well, it is because you taught people a smooth lesson in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're searching for contentment. It is all over revelation. 
And this is why we say contentment is truly from revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and success. Then Allah speaks uh, in Surah Al-Anfal also about a situation where there are two parties that are fighting each other, perhaps a war on a larger scale or an argument on a smaller scale. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 61, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ If they are inclining towards peace, if they are inclining towards peace, then you too should incline towards it and lay your trust on Allah, for indeed He is all-powerful, all-wise. Two warring factions, one of them desperately wants peace with you. You're doubting their intentions. There is nothing glaring to prove that they are being insincere. If there was something glaring to prove that they were insincere, you would be foolish to make peace with them in a way that you are bitten again from the same direction. But if there is nothing to say that they were being insincere, Allah says, incline towards it. If they stretch their arm seeking peace, you should do the same. You should also seek the peace. That is a blessing. That is goodness. So Allah says, and you know what? Lay your trust on Allah. Because you may not know exactly. They may want to cheat you. And that's why in the very next verse, when Allah says uh, at the end of this verse that He is all-powerful and He is all-knowing, He is all-wise, He says, وَإِن يُرِيدُوا أَن يَخْدَعُوكَ فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهِ if they want to cheat you thereafter and deceive you, Allah is sufficient for you. Wow. You be content. You sit back, relaxed. You followed Allah's instruction. Now you can, you can actually rest assured that Allah will take care of you. He will protect you. Whatever happens is the best for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So my brothers and sisters, very importantly, learn to please Allah in all that you do and learn to follow Allah in all that you'd like to do and Allah will grant you that success in the dunya and the akhirah filled with the greatest contentment. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب.